Welcome, Mindsetters, to this fantastic Learn Extra live show. You're here with me, Megan, and Tanya for a whole hour of Business Studies Matrix. Yes, proudly sponsored by Macmillan. Please don't forget. And I want to tell you where you can get all your information. If you want to sit with a note in front of you like a good student that I know you guys all are, you go to www.learnextra.co.za forward slash live, and you get all the notes that we're going to go through right now. Or you can chat to me on the Facebook page while you're watching. Ask me questions. I tell them to Tanya and then we talk about it and we can talk and we can help you. And that's at facebook.com forward slash learn extra. So I know you guys are so excited. Yay, because we are doing industrial relations today. So I just want to tell you that Tanya and I are going to work a little bum off to make this the best, best hour and make sure that you guys get all the information you need. And I need to tell you something after the break, but I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to hand over to Tanya and leave you in suspense, okay? <laughs> Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at industrial relations and we're looking, uh, we've touched on grievance procedures before, we're going to go into a bit more detail, but let's have a quick look at what we're going to be doing today. Today we are going to be looking at, looking at industrial, so investigating developments in industrial relations that are related to contemporary business practices, as well as these, this is something slightly different. We're going to be looking at the history of trade unions, the functions, roles of trade unions, as well as grievance procedures. So the first thing we're going to be doing today is just having a general quick look at what is industrial relations. Remember, um, last week we looked at human resources, so this is just another function onto this. So what is industrial relations, or IR? So first part, industrial relations covers the relationship between management and employees and how they interact, and through which they regulate conflict in the workplace. Now, as I was reading this, you can remember, well, I hope you remember back to when we were doing legislation, and you can think back to the Labor Relations Act, and that act is basically put into place to regulate the relationship or the interaction between employers and employees. So industrial relations goes hand in hand with labor relations. Let's, do, let's look at one more thing with this. Industrial relations also focuses on the relationship between management and particularly groups of workers presented by a trade union. So um, industrial relations, we're looking at employers, employees, as well as types of trade unions, other councils, and how these groups um, interact, um, try and negotiate, things like that. Let's go to the next slide. So. What, well, what I've done, yeah, and I'm going to go through some words quite briefly because you um, should remember them from previous lessons or just in general. So important terms for industrial relations. The first one looks at a grievance. Now remember, a, grie a grievance is a conflict of interest between the employer and the employee. So there's some sort of unhappiness between the two parties. It could be something like working conditions, uh, it could be hours of work, remuneration, issues like that. And obviously remember, when workers aren't happy, um, it's going to affect their work performance, as well as it could create other issues in the business, like strike action, industrial action, types of actions um, that will influence the profitability or perhaps influence the profitability in the long run. Uh, the next important uh, concept I want you guys to know would be a dispute. Now, a dispute is a conflict of interest between the employer and members of a trade union. So a grievance is between the employer and the employee, where a dispute is between the employer and a trade union. The next part I want to show you, grade 12s, you should remember, these are words that you need to remember, is mediation, which is negotiations to end a dispute are handled by a neutral third person, which is a mediator. And I want you to remember arbitration, and an arbitrator is a neutral third person who hears both sides of the story and then decides how the dispute will be resolved. So remember, a mediator is somebody that sits with the two parties and they try and come up, the three of them, um, try and come up with a solution, where an arbitrator is a third party and they make the decision. Um, and remember, there's also, if you are not happy with what the arbitrator has done, there are steps to be followed. Um, but let's, g let's get into more detail when we look at a grievance. So, next slide. 
Now, what we're going to be doing today as well, remember, we're going to be looking at the history of trade unions. Now, what I've done for you is I've split it into the history of trade unions in general and the history of trade unions in South Africa. So let's have a quick look at the history of trade unions in general. So the first part is trade unions had their origins in the guild system um, of medieval Europe in the 13th century. So you can see how old this is. Now, what they did was merchant guilds, guilds, consisting of all the specialist traders in the town were forerunners of a craft, of craft guilds. Now, the guilds restricted membership to a particular craft or trade, such as metal work. So when guilds were established initially, it was specific. So if you were a blacksmith, there were guilds for blacksmiths. Uh, if you worked with leather, for example. And what they did there was they created with a guild a sort of a society where people in the same industry as such um, came together to try and sort out issues in that industry. Now, so that was really the right in the beginning. So uh, the old-fashioned way of looking at a trade union was a guild. Then I want to jump down towards sort of in the middle of the history in general. If you want to catch up on what I've skipped here, you can always go. Remember, you've got your learn extra notes and go through it. But let's have a look. So towards the end, I've discussed the rest with you in general, but if you want to read in more detail. So now... What happened was, in the 19th and 20th centuries, the unions became less rebellious and mainly concentrated on themselves with defending the interests of craftsmen rather than organizing workers against employers. So what that implies was, um, up to the 19th century, uh, a lot of these trade unions or guilds uh, was quite an aggressive approach and it was trying to, it was us against them where towards the 18th, 19th century, it was more about improving the workers' conditions instead of just fighting or opposing the employer. Now, in France and Germany and other European countries, socialist parties and other anarchists played a prominent role in forming and building trade unions, especially from the 1870s onwards. Now, grade 12, what I want you to keep in mind um, is when the Industrial Revolution happened and how things shifted with people working in factories. Um, and you can also imagine working in factories if there weren't any strict labor laws, um, issues of people being exploited in the sense of working long hours, not being paid properly, not having good, healthy working conditions, etc. So, what I've, so this is the, the history of trade unions in general, looking more at Europe and places like that. Now I want to have a look at the South African history of trade unions. And something you need to keep in mind, grade 12s, the history of South African trade unions is very closely linked to what happened in South Africa politically because of apartheid laws and even laws before apartheid. So I'd like to keep that in mind when we're looking at this. So the history of trade unions in South Africa is that in South Africa, the first unions, such as the SA Boilermakers Union, consisted of artisans and were mainly white. Now, in 1922, some gold mines decided to employ semi-skilled African workers in positions previously reserved for whites. And what they did there, um, they provided them with lower wages, which were to be paid to the workers in an attempt to cut costs. Now, widespread strikes and unrest followed in the mining areas of what is the Gauteng province now. And it just go goes into saying, explaining about the army had to bring, be brought in um, to suppress the uprising. Now, only in the mid-1930s, and this is quite a big jump, did the workers start to join unions in large numbers. Now, as more African workers were employed in the mines and in industries, these unions mobilized the community against the apartheid regime. So that's what I was saying. Remember, this is very much linked to politics in South Africa at the time. Now, in 1985, grade 12s, the Congress of South African Trade Unions, or COSATU, was established. That wasn't all that long ago, if you think about it. Now, they also go into explaining that Kusatu is now one of the biggest trade unions in South Africa. Um, they were very closely linked to the ANC. And what they did was, so what I'm trying to say is you can see how trade unions in South Africa were, it wasn't just about workers, it was actually about improving the rights of, of all South Africans to where we are today. So in the European sense, remember the history there was very much looking after the workers, and the South African sense, it was really about social justice as well. So there's quite a big difference there. The next slide. Now, what I've done for you is I've created sort of a little mind map on the functions aims of trade unions. So let's have a look. So what are the aims of trade unions today? Let's change the color of the pen. So what are the aims? 
First part, to improve working conditions. Now, what do I mean with working conditions? So are you working in a healthy working, in a, are you working in a healthy um, environment? Are, is there ventilation? Is there enough light? Also, um, this could also include the machinery you're working on. Is it um, safe? Um, are all the safety precautions in there, stuff like that. So you, trade unions work at, the aim would be safe working conditions. Another one, workplace democracy, so where people all have a say and are protected. It could also be, the aim would be to promote training and education of members. Remember, we want to train and skill people. Uh, the more skilled and trained you are, the higher, the better job you can really get. So trade unions are not just there to, um, and a lot of you make this mistake, Rachel, well, where you think trade unions are all about striking and stuff like that. Trade unions, are, it's so much more than that. So one of the things that I want you to keep in mind, it's about they're trying to promote education and skills training for current workers. Another aim of a trade union is to work to improving financial welfare, in other words, making sure people are paid enough, as well as to protect jobs or create job security, and lastly, to ensure that workers are treated fairly. Now, as I'm going through the, tra the aims of trade unions, I'm sure a lot of you can go, oh, but this sounds really familiar. So trade unions and legislation we've done previously do go hand in hand. If you think about the basic conditions of employment, Labor Relations Act. So remember, legislation also goes hand in hand with us. So that was the main purpose of trade unions. I want to show you quickly the functions of trade unions. Now, the functions of trade unions, sorry, the roles of trade unions. Now, the roles of trade unions, some of these things do overlap, but there is a definite difference. So please keep in mind if, you be ri if you're writing an essay or a medium-type question that you, dis you know the distinction between the two. So the first role is to prevent retrenchment. Remember, the word retrenchment is when people, when businesses aren't being very profitable and they need to cut costs by letting employees go. So trade unions, a role they play is trying to prevent people from being retrenched. Another role they play is to resolve grievance procedures and disputes in the workplace. So trying to almost act as a facilitator or a mediator in the, the interaction between workers and employees and trying to get the best possible outcome for both parties. Another role they play is to improve social security as well as to ensure that workers are treated fairly in the workplace. Trade unions are also there so that they can be involved in decision-making processes. Now, to be involved in decision-making processes, I'm referring to the workers being involved in, in the decision-making procedures. So what I mean with that is if you're a worker and you're involved in what decisions are being made in the business, firstly, you're informed, which will give you a sense of being involved, but it'll also give the, it empowers workers to know what's happening in the company. And the last role of a trade union would be to improve, as I said, with the aims, to improve the working conditions and terms of employment within or for workers. Now, grade 12s, I want you to remember, you also get different types of trade unions. A lot of industries are, have very specific trade unions. So teachers, for example, have their trade union, etc. So if you want to do some research on that, go see uh, what the different trade unions are. That um, could be interesting for you. Um, I also want you to keep in mind a lot of trade unions are part of Kasatu, they fall under the same umbrella, but they're a separate trade union by themselves as well, if that makes sense, they're affiliated to Kasatu. Let's have a look at the next slide. Now the next slide, I want you to show you grade 12s, the worker, or what workers' rights are. Now workers' rights are part of the constitution of South Africa, and it entrenches the following. The first important thing, fair labor practices. Now fair labor practices would be part of the basic conditions of employment. Um, then the next, the right to associate. Now the right to associate be, would be the right to associate with trade unions or other councils. The next one, the right to collective bargaining, which would also be linked to trade unions and um, employer associations. And lastly, the right to strike is part of a constitution as long as it, as long as it is a legal strike. And again, li linked to trade unions. So the right to strike, which I'm going to go into detail um, in a little bit later, there's a whole process to striking for it to become a legal strike. Um, I think at this stage, I want to hand over, and then we can Need carry on break. after the break. Break time. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
I've learned so much about trade unions. You've learned so much about trade unions. My mom has learned so much about trade unions. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break, and we'll be right back with grade 12 business studies afterwards. Okay. Welcome back, grade 12. So, remember in the beginning, I told you that I have something to share with you, and it's something really special, and it's something that we've decided to start here at Mindset, which is a competition. Yes, you can win free tickets. Okay, so let me tell you what it's about. It's called After Earth. It's a competition that we've been running now. We're going to run for three weeks. It includes Will and Jaden Smith. It's their movie that they're going to come out. It's coming out the 7th of June. So what we want to do is we're going to give a keyword each show. So this show has a keyword. I'll tell you it now. And if you want to go and register so you can win two tickets so you and your friend can go and watch the movie together, so sweet, then you guys can register at www.learnextra.co.za forward slash after earth. I'll post that on the page so you don't have to worry. You can just click on the link and you can register. And if you write down the keyword, which is earth, earth, I'll say it one more time, earth. <laughs> and I'll write and I'll post it on the page as also in case you get confused. And I'm going to show you the trailer right now so you can get really, really excited. And then I'll see you afterwards. Okay. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you, and he does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Now go make some good memories together. Survivors. Do you know where we are? No, sir. This is Earth. There's an emergency beacon in the tail section of our ship. Approximately 100 kilometers from here. We need to retrieve that beacon. Or we're going to die. Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. Together. We will survive. I hear something. It has found you. We must abort this mission. You wouldn't give any other ranger that order. You are not a ranger. You are my son. Remember, danger is very real. Fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. Welcome back, Great Solves. I hope you really, really enjoyed the trailer. And I know where I'm going on the 7th of June to watch that movie. So if you would like to win two tickets, yes, two for you and your friend, please go enter the competition. And the word is Earth, the keyword for you, Great Solves. Okay, well, let me hand over to... And then let's get, fini blah, let's get finished with business. I'm nowhere now. Sorry, let me just repeat that. Let me hand over, and then we'll get finished with business studies, guys. Let's go. So before the great before the break, grade <laughs> twelve, it's something now. I don't know what is going on. Before Tanya, the break, we know it. I'm sorry, but yeah. So we we are now. So <laughs> before the break, we were looking at the roles and aims of trade unions. We briefly looked at the history of trade unions, and all these things are quite important, grade twelve. So make sure that not only do you know what the roles and aims are, but you know the difference between the two, as well as um, it can get a bit tricky if you are asked to related to the different types of legislation. So always try, and, when you read this, try and link it to it. Now, what I've also done today is I've taken the Labor Relations Act, uh, which we've briefly looked at before, but I've done it now in a lot more detail because this is very important with industrial relations, and just take the key things that are related to the IR or IR. Now, the first part here, the Labor Relations Act, or L LRA, 
spells out the employers and trade unions, spells out the, how employers and trade unions should function together. So the Labor Relations Act is literally an act that focuses on how employers and employees and trade unions all function together. And remember, um, being part of a trade union is a right as a South African, and it's, it's actually a lot of time encouraged because trade unions will protect you as an employee. Now, let's have a look, let's, let's, let's have a look at the next part. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's something <laughs> now that is with us. We can't speak. <laughs> um, well, uh, great, I was promise you I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, we're busy with the LRA. Now, this also provides a set of rights and a framework for union organizations, collective bargaining, and resolution of disputes and strikes. Now, if uh, some of these words were a bit fuzzy, remember I gave you a nice breakdown of keywords in industrial relations. So go back, have a read, and make sure that you understand fully what these different terms mean. Uh, the LRA also looks at, or part of this, is that the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation, and Arbitration, or the CCMA, and the Labor Court were established by the Labor Relations Act. So the Labor Relations Act put those together to help workers. Now, these two bodies also help to ensure fairness and justice in the workplace. Now, what I've done for you here yeah, is this is quite important, grade 12s. The LRA includes provision on the following. So the first one, freedom of association. So this could also include with the freedom of association, association would be with different people, different groups, but also freedom of association to belong to a union. Next one, organizational rights. Se uh, third one, strikes. And like I said, there's a whole procedure to strikes, grade 12s, so let's wait for that one. Next, protective action, to be protected against unfair dismissal. And lastly, no unfair labor practices. And no unfair labor practices would also link to basic conditions of employment. Remember, working hours, remuneration, things like that. Now, let's go to the next slide. What I've done here is I've taken down, remember, with the Labor Relations Act, it takes into account that workers are allowed to go or to take part in industrial action. Now, industrial action is basically um, an umbrella term for different things that workers can do to try and put pressure on their employers. And remember, these things need to be done through a trade union and for it to become a legal industrial action as such. So the first one, and the one I think we all know very well as South Africans, is strikes. So what is a strike? So a strike is an organized stay away action from the workplace to try and convince the employer to attend to employees' grievances. However, employees do not get paid for the time they are on strike. In other words, no work, no pay. So a strike, grade 12s, is literally an industrial action where people do not go into work. Um, the problem with that, well, first off, you can imagine that puts a lot of pressure on the business, bad publicity, but also production might be stopping. And on the other side, for employees, if they are not at work, obviously they're not going to get paid. So it's, it's quite an aggressive form of industrial action. Another form of industrial action Pick would be a go slow. Now, a go slow, grade 12s, is when employees work at a slower rate, and it has a negative influence on production, and I would also say productivity, and then they use this method to bring their grievances to the attention of the employer. So a go slow, um, compared to a, a strike, would be I go into work today, but I literally work really, really slow. Or your students work like really slow, and they yes. tell you, no, we're not in the mood for business today. But and that, that would never happen. No, yeah. not with business. And <laughs> remember, go slow, that's, that's not really worth no. it. Why would you want to do that to yourself? Then you're, li you're missing out, and she's just like, okay, well, I know everything, and you don't. So, <laughs> win lose situation, believe me, don't do that. But again, uh, in a business perspective, this would put a lot of pressure on the company because yeah. your workers are there and they technically are performing, but they're not performing to the best of their ability. ability. Yeah. And remember, the key word there, grade 12s, would be productivity as well as um, being efficient. Okay, And this will, in the long run or in the short run, um, affect the profitability of the business. So this will really force employers to a large extent to come up with some sort of resolution. And the last type of industrial action would be picketing. Now, picketing is, the is a procession organized by trade unions 
where employees can demonstrate about their grievances in a peaceful manner. So this would, a picketing would be, um, like, a, like I've written here for you, it's a demonstration in a peaceful manner. So it's people walking through the streets of um, Joburg, um, having big posters up saying why they're unhappy and just making people aware. Now, while I'm on this topic with industrial action grade 12s, remember there are two sides to it. So this could be, remember, why do workers go into industrial action? Because they want to press an issue with their employer. It could be um, remuneration or money issues, could be work time, stuff like that. Now, on the one hand, that is good to make sure that employers are being or are treating their employees fair. But on the other hand, grade 12s, you also need to remember that these actions um, can also, well, they do influence the business where the business loses money. And if you think about it, in the, in the economy of South Africa is large, it has a very negative impact on our economy. So both trade unions, employers and workers need to be very mindful when doing these things um, as to not have a very destructive effect on the whole economy. The next slide I've got here looks at what the grievance procedure is. Now remember earlier I spoke about if employees are unhappy, there's a way of going about making sure your employer um, is aware of what's wrong. Now remember, um, before I got to looking at what the industrial action types are, remember the go slows, etc. what an employee would do before they go into industrial action, they would af actually have to submit a grievance form stating what the issue is. So let's go have a look at the grievance procedure. The grievance procedure starts off with, all businesses have employees who are not satisfied for different reasons. It could be working hours, remuneration, etc. Now, this usually results in a conflict of interest between the employer and the employee. The conflict of interest would be, I would, for example, as a worker, I want more money. The, on the other side, the business is going, we can't afford to pay you more money. So that would be a conflict of interest. Um, now, these grievances must be resolved correctly as to prevent further disputes. And lastly, these procedures give employees the opportunity to communicate their grievances in a, or to management. So I sort of skipped around now. So that is just what a grievance procedure is. This is the actual grievance procedure now, guys. Now, and what I've written here, it's bottom up. And this is basically what I'm trying to state is this is from um, the worker up to management. So what are the grievance procedures? The first part is that an employee gives, uh, gives a written statement of the grievance. In other words, stating, I'm unhappy because I feel I, I'm underpaid. Let's use that as the example. Now the next part to this is, so you've, written in, you've given in the written statement. The next part is, if the grievance cannot be resolved, the employee lodges a grievance with the next level of management. So it started off, let's say, with lower management. If there's no happiness or no re re resolution, you're going to go to the next level, which is middle management. So it didn't work the first time, you're going to go to the next level of management. What's the next part of this? Now, the employer and the employee have to meet. Now, a meeting is held with the employee at a time that is suitable and agreed upon by both parties. Now, the meeting should be attended by the employee, important. It should be attended by a trade union representative, the supervisor, so the person you're working under, as well as any relevant management. So when you call the meeting for the grievance, you literally need to have all parties concerned together so that you can all hear what the issue is. The next part of the grievance, proce grievance procedure is that the employee will then be informed of any decision that has been made on their grievance. Now, if the grievance is still not resolved, the employee lodges a grievance with the highest level of management. So now let's assume we've gone from lower to middle. Now finally we've gone to top management in the company. Now at this stage, another meeting is arranged and attended by the employee trade union representative and all the other relevant people. So you've done this. You've had your discussion, your employer, the trade union reps, everybody got together, you came to an answer. Now, if you're still not happy with the outcome of that meeting with top management at the last level that you can go internally, the following will happen. So, you're still not happy, what you can do then? Appeal, an appeal would be necessary. So, if the employee wishes to appeal against the disciplinary action or whatever was discussed at the time, 
um, the employee must be invited to a further hearing. Um, so what example, the example I've used here was, for example, if somebody is, let's say, constantly late for work and they've re received warnings saying, you know, you need to arrive on time, your, your, product, your lack of productivity is affecting our business, and they've gone into a disciplinary or such. So now you have the right, as a worker, to have your trade union rep, your, your supervisor, etc., with you with this. Now, they've come to a resolution saying that they're going to dock a week's pay or whatever, whatever they've decided on. You can now appeal what they've said. Now, if the matter can't be resolved, a dispute will be declared and the matter will be referred to a mediation or arbitration or, obviously, the CCMA. Now, the matter can also be referred to the Labour Court if it comes to um, such a serious part, but it'll have to go through levels. So it'll be internally, then you'll go through or attempt mediation arbitration. If that doesn't work, the CCMA. And then lastly, it'll go to the Labour Court. So that's roughly the, the steps to um, a grievance or um, trying to resolve an issue between the employer, employee and employer. Now you'll see on the next, oh, there we go. I've explained quite a bit today and I've got some time, which is really cool. So we can get <laughs> to the question. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so grade 12s, this is the time you all know what I'm gonna tell you. I want you to grab your highlighter, grab a pen, so that you can highlight with me and we can all keep on track of what's gonna happen in this case study. Also, um, thanks to Macmillan, you can follow in your textbook, if you have the textbook, with me. So you can go to page uh, 203 and it's activity four and we're going to be looking at this activity together. So, pens, papers, highlighters. Let's have a look through this case study. Now, LJR Frozen Food Manufacturers. Now, the workers of this company, who belong to the South African Commercial Catering and Allied Workers Union, have finally had enough of being treated badly at their workplace. So, that's sort of one issue. Now, the rules and regulations of the Basic Conditions of Employment Act are not being followed and several workers have been dismissed without the proper procedure being followed. Here's another issue. Now the factory supervisor, let's move this up, the factory supervisor Joel is very abusive towards the workers, three, and yesterday he refused patients, a worker in the factory, time off for work to attend her sister's funeral. Another issue. Now the workplace is dirty and some of the mach machinery is unsafe. Another issue. As I write a number next to grade 12s, you know these are issues I'm picking up um, within the case study. Now the workers also don't receive wage slips and do not know what deductions are being made. They got together after work and discussed what their next move should be. Normsa, who is a food packer, suggested that they should call a strike. Now, she believes that this is the last resort to get senior management to pay attention to their grievance and to change their attitude towards the workers. Now, they've tried many previous ways of um, trying to address the grievance with Joel, but nothing has happened. Now, the workers called on their shop steward. Um, wait, wait, grade 12s, before I carry on to the, with the last bit of this case study, please don't... Don't move. Don't go get water. Don't do anything. Literally, freeze where you are. We're going to go for a quick break. Ad break. Okay, okay, no problem. Freeze, and we'll be back right after this ad break. Red Tops, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Great Tops. I hope you are frozen. Like exactly where you are, like Tanya said, like just freeze because we have to carry on with this. We're going to push because we have the next few questions to get through and we're actually aiming to get through maybe three, but we said two, but maybe three. So let's go through it and we're doing, don't forget, industrial relations. Okay. So go for it, Tanya. Let's do it. Okay, cool guys. So remember before, you, so you've like unfrozen on all that stuff. <laughs> and we started with a case study looking at um, people in a factory being unhappy, um, and I highlighted a couple of issues. Let's do the last bit to this case study. And it says, the workers called their shop, their shop steward, Joshua, who again brought the grievance to the attention of Joel, their immediate supervisor, but nothing has happened. The workers then held a ballot during which one vote, sorry, the workers then held a ballot during which all but one voted in favor of embarking on a strike action. Now the shop steward, Joshua, then served a 48-hour 48, 48 notice 
on Joel um, that the workers were going to embark on industrial action in the form of a strike. Now, Great Twelves, what I want you to um, keep in mind yeah, if you look at everything from the employer side in this case study, that they were doing a lot of stuff um, wrong. And not literally, it's not just an ethical profession issue, it will literally be against the law according to our labor laws. And if we look at what the workers were doing, um, they were following grievance procedures properly, because remember they took the grievance to one level of management and worked up to it. And also grade 12s, with a strike action or any industrial action, you need to give 48 hours or two days notice. So let's look at the first question. The first question asks us, is Norms's suggestion, so is Norms's suggestion appropriate? Explain your reasons. Now, I should move the page down. So first off grade 12s, without thinking about it, yes, her actions were correct. Now, what I want you to keep in mind though, with Normsa's response, and I'll write this down for you as well, Normsa has the right, um, obviously, to discuss the fact that she wants to strike because the workers at the factory are unhappy. So the issue there is Normsa has the right to suggest it. On the other hand, Normsa does not have the right to just say, right, we're going to go strike tomorrow. There's proper procedure to be followed with that. So let's quickly get this right. So the question was, does Normsa have the right to suggest this? Yes, she does. So let's get this down. So Normsa has the right but she needs to first speak to management. So she, management, management needs to be informed, which they've done. So management needs to be informed. The next part to this grade 12s would be that they are allowed to talk about a strike, but they can't call it. And lastly, um, what they need to keep in mind is that proper procedure needs to be followed. And we'll be seeing um, in a bit more detail what the proper procedure is to do this. So that was question A. Is Norms allowed to do this? Yes, she is. She can suggest it, um, take it to management, um, follow the proper procedures, but they can't just strike because they feel like it kind of thing. Let's look at the next question, B. It's asking us, with the section on L LRA in this unit in mind and your knowledge of this in unit 3 and 4, which we've gone through together, grade Twelves, decide whether the workers have the right to strike, and then they ask you, yeah, try to conduct further research into LRA to get more detailed information on strike action and procedures. So with question B, grade twelves, they're asking you, um, this isn't a typical exam question as, as such, but they're asking you, are the workers, are they entitled to strike, and what would the procedure be? So let's go through this together, grab your pens, let's write this down. This will give you a good idea on what the procedure is. So for question B, so the first part here, we have, or what I want you to keep in mind, is as South African workers, strike action is allowed in the Constitution. So yes, the workers are definitely allowed to do this. And the next part, uh, basically, so I've jumped the gun here again. So what this question was asking is that decide whether the workers have the right to strike. So we said yes, they have the right to strike. And basically, if we go back to the notes that I did on the LRA, it is broken down in there. So I don't want to waste time writing all the stuff down you can print out for yourself. Let's go to the next question. So C, we're looking at what are, this is the one I was jumping to, C, what are the steps to be followed by the workers in order to call a legal strike? Very important to, well, the most important word in this question, grade 12s, is that what are the steps, first off, but what are they supposed to do to have a legal strike? Remember, a legal strike would be, um, it's informed between the workers, the unions, and employers, and a legal strike would be if people just go out and do it. And that's a whole different issue completely. So what are the steps? So first off, let me find the space here. So for C, what are the steps? So first off, um, if they want to strike, the dispute will be referred to the CCMA or any other council or a council, well not any council, um, a council related to this. Next, or the second part, so let's label this one. So number two, the next part to this, that they will get a certificate. that a dispute remains un 
they will get a, a from the CCMA or council, they'll get a certificate that the dispute is unresolved. So between everyone, they can't come to a conclusion and literally the dispute can't be resolved. So they have a certificate. The third part to this is that what they'll now have to would, sorry, so the third part to this is Great Wells. 30 days elapse since the referral and what they need to do. So they can, up, they can be up to 30 days um, for this process to take place for you to go and inform everyone. But what has to happen within 48 hours before they do the strike, they need to inform three parties. So what are the three parties that need to be informed in 48 hours? So the 48 hours, they in the 48 hours, they need to get hold of or inform, that's a better word, grade 12, they need to inform their employer that they're going to strike. They need to inform the council that they're going to strike. And the last part, grade 12, they also need to inform the employer's organization that they are going to strike. Um, now, what I haven't done or spoken about a lot is that so workers are allowed to be part of a trade union, but employers, on the other hand, are also allowed to be part of employer organizations. And remember, on the other side, so um, employees are allowed to conduct industrial action, as in strikes, go slows, picketing. Um, on the other hand, employers are allowed to do, or their action would be a lockout. Now, a lockout is literally where the business premises is locked out, people or the workers can't come in. Now, if there's a case of, and th that could be for various reasons where businesses need to do this. Now, if a business has to conduct a lockout, they need to follow the same 48-hour process where they inform workers, their unions, et cetera, that this process is going to happen. And this would, again, would be um, for a business to have a legal lockout. Now, let's look, have a look at the last question on this section, grade 12. It asks us, what can the workers do if their strike action fails to elicit any response from the manager from the company? Now, at this stage, grade 12s, if this still hasn't worked out or if this still hasn't been fixed, what the workers will have to do is literally, again, refer the issue to the CCMA. Now, again, um, if we look at disputes, remember, if the CCMA doesn't work out, you'll eventually end up at the labor court. But so let's get this done. So if this strike action, this initial strike action didn't work out, where can they go? They can go to the CCMA. Now, what we're going to do yeah, grade 12s, again, I've got another case study here. It's a little bit long. It's, it's, it's not long. It's about a medium type thing. I'm going to read through it really, really quickly so you've got reference to what I'm speaking about. If you've got your textbook, all you need to do, grade 12s, with Macmillan, Go to page 206, it's literally the next activity. I like this activity because it followed on from the previous one and that it also goes into a little bit more depth on the Labor Relations Act and what's been going wrong in this factory. So let's have a quick look. Now remember the previous case study, there was that woman called Nomsa. Now N Nomsa the food packer was dismissed by the company because they firmly believe that she instigated the strike. However, Nomsa argues that she merely discussed it with her fellow workers and the fact that they are being treated unfairly and tried to decide what to do about it. Now, she also said that she alone can't call a strike. Now, the union representative, Joshua, called the workers to a meeting after, after patients reported that she was unable to attend her sister's funeral. Now, at this meeting, the workers, except one, voted to call a strike, if you remember this, and she also pointed out that they have, on various occasions, tried to get their disputes settled. Now, NOMSA then decided to take the matter to the CCMA, but she is unclear about the correct procedure to be followed in order to bring her case about unfair dismissal to this institution. Now, the first question here, grade 12s, it says, or it's asking us, identify the unfair labor practices in the case study in question, both question one and question two. Now, if you remember back, as we were going through the first case study, I was quickly numbering um, all the things I saw that popped out. And in this case, you can also see things that popped out, yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is and try and think back to what I read earlier. Um, what are the unfair labor practices, yeah? Off the top of my head, grade 12s, some of these things should really have stood out for you. It was the boss being abusive to the workers, 
um, in front of uh, in front of other workers. So instead of discussing it, they were just you're just shouting at everyone. Another issue that stands out is that the lady that was called Patience was denied denied going to her sister's funeral, which is part of the basic conditions. Remember, you're allowed leave, and, and this would be part of family leave. And but you know, before I get carried away, let's write this down so you can all have it. So, what are the unfair labour practices that we've picked up? So, for question A, the first one I have here, grade eight. I'm um, grade eight. Good <laughs> grief. <laughs> grade twelve. Grade I'm so sorry. What a diss. So, the <laughs> first part here, guys, as I said, would be the abusive superior or the abusive. Yeah, let's go with superior. Shouting at the supervisor shouting at the workers. Remember, there's, you can do this in a better manner. The second issue that stood out would be the unsafe or and as well dirty working environment. Uh, let's do two more. Um, another issue that I picked up would be refusing that lady family um, family leave or family, responsibi family responsibility leave. So refusing the lady to go to her family, uh, to her sister's funeral. So I'm just going to go refusing family responsibility. I'm going to make this short for once. I never make anything short, but just remember that. Now remember, guys, you get different sick days. We've looked at this in the past. So you have a number of sick days allowed. Um, remember, um, also, so you also entitled to like 21 consecutive days leave. Um, and part of this um, would be family responsibility. Now, for family responsibility, it could be the illness, death um, of a family member, and you have the responsibility, obviously, to be there. And you get three of those days a year. And let's go to the next question. The next question asks us, what is the legal position regarding salary and wage slips? Now, in the previous case study, it was telling us that these workers are working in a dirty place, Etc., and they're also not getting their wage or salary slip, telling them how much they're making, as well as, very important, what deductions are being made. So they don't really know why they're paying, being paid what. So, what are the legal positions? What is the legal position regarding this? Simply, the legal position regarding people receiving pay slips, grade 12s, would be according to the basic conditions of Employment Act, workers must receive. A pay slip or salary slip of sorts, where they the income is broken down, where they can see what deductions are being made, what's going to pension, what's going to middle aid. So, according to the basic conditions of Employment Act, workers must receive a pay slip. The second, sorry, the third question asks us what is the term used for the type of leave leave a company should grant when a close family member or a worker dies. Remember, I sort of jumped the gun on this one. This would be family responsibility leave. That would be the first part. And remember, you get three days a year. And this would be if there's illness or a death or something of that sort in the family. It could also be the birth um, of, well, your husband or... No, it couldn't be the birth of your husband. <laughs> <laughs> well... So if your wife gives birth as a husband, you're entitled to have family responsibility leave to be with your family. Let's look at the next question. Now, is this type of leave, leave covered in the basic conditions of employment and how much is granted? Like I said, yes, it is. And remember, three days. The next question, do you think Normsa has a case for unfair dismissal? Now, this really grade 12s um, could go... Either way, I would personally go with, so this is E, in principle, yes, she does have the, she does have the right to um, refer to the CCMA. So yes, she can refer this to the CCMA. And remember, what I want you to great to, to remember, employers can't fire workers without giving them a proper disciplinary hearing. So Nomsa's employers were already wrong because they 
decided she caused the strike, she caused this action, and they were simply going to fire her. Remember, employers cannot just fire workers. They need to go through the proper procedure. So that would be disciplinary hearings. Remember, these things involve written and verbal warnings, and they can't simply fire Normsa because they think she started the trouble. I think there's one more question with this case study. This question asks, what procedures should she follow before she resorts to the CCMA? And what I've got here, and it's, you can write this down with me, what she needs to do, and what she's tried to do, um, is try to resolve the dispute internally. In other words, grade 12s, she should try and sort this problem out um, with her supervisors, um, managers, um, management, before she goes to the CCMA. So what Normsa should do is try and sort the problem out um, in her work environment before she goes to the CCMA. It's, it's cheaper, it's easier, and possibly it will be a better outcome for both parties. And another part I want you to add in there, um, she could have done this through following um, a grievance procedure, which we've looked at. So if she didn't get any luck from management, she should have gone through the process of a grievance procedure. But as we read the case study, it's quite clear that her employers were aggressively trying to get rid of her. So that would probably be a good idea to then rather go to the CCMA or to your trade union to try and be protected. Because remember, this part of industrial relations, we're looking at um, how people are or employees are protected. Okay, good stuff, great 12s. Now, we're going to go to question three. Um, so follow me. This is a previous exam question. So this exam question looks at, and I've lost it, sorry about that. This question looks at, so it's asking us, state six functions or roles of trade unions. So I quickly want you to scramble back in your brain to when I was going through those little mind maps, what are the six, fu or what are the six functions or roles? So let me quickly jot them down for you. And as I put them down, I hope you remember them. So the first one would be collective bargaining. The second role or function would be to improve working conditions. Now, working conditions, remember grade 12s, could be something as simple as lighting, making sure that there's enough ventilation, things like that. Imagine sitting in a hot summer's day. Just think about a nice way to think about this. Um, you know those really hot, hot summer days. It's sort of rainy. It's getting really, really stuffy in the class. Imagine all those doors, all the windows closed, and you have to sit and write a two-hour test. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's insane. It can't Horrible. be done. Now, imagine this is your job, and you're working in conditions like this. It's not good for you as a person. Chances are that you'll get sick, um, and that'll obviously also affect your pocket. Another role or function of a trade union would be to ensure job security and let's move this down. It would be to also, and this is a nice one that I haven't spoken about yet, to support gender equality. So part of the trade unions, grade 12s, would be looking after the, the rights of workers in the sense that they're being treated fairly. Um, and also remember, I mentioned that it would be improving their skills, their education, etc. But in um, specifically, which is nice in South African context, is that trade unions push gender equality. And what, uh, what's meant with that, remember, is to make sure that men and female are treat males and females are treated equally. And for m females especially, um, to get work that was previously um, sort of reserved for men. So trade unions are trying to get the, the scale even for men and women. And I'd like to do one more with you. Let's see if we can squeeze one more. Um, the last one we can have here, it would also be to improve social security. So social security would be looking at South Africa as a whole and trying to improve um, living conditions, things like that. So trade unions are really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think she was like freaking out. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in to our Grade 12 Business Studies, proudly sponsored by Macmillan. Don't forget, and I can't wait to see you guys again. Tanya was a fantastic show. I enjoyed it so much. First time here, and I hope you have a fantastic Thursday evening, mindsetters. Goodbye. <laughs>